nice skin, so gorgeous. We thank the life gorgeous. Thank the life gorgeous. I love the life gorgeous. It's also so tight. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Craig Kilborn coming to you from Minneapolis, Minnesota for the playoffs. And I went to game one of the Timberwolves and the Suns. Uh, this is uh, Tuesday morning before game two. And I'm feeling much better after game one. That's exactly what the Timberwolves needed. They had lost three times in the regular season of the Phoenix Suns, and it wasn't even close. And then there was that debacle of a loss in Game 82 in Minnesota, where if we would have won, we would be second in the West with home court against Denver if we advanced to the second round. That's okay. It appeared that Phoenix had our number. But uh, Chris Finch and the coaching staff and the players made adjustments they were the desperate team in game one, and it was glorious. I was courtside with my brother and the great Charlie Swanson, the unofficial mayor of Minnesota. <sighs> I did pick the Timberwolves to win the series. Uh, wasn't strong a strong conviction. Uh, I have them winning in six games, and I said that they have a, a better defense, they have home court, and they will make the adjustments. Game one was all of that. Here's my issue. I also said prior to the series, we will go, that's us the Wolves, because I'm part of the team. <laughs> uh, we will go as far as Anthony Edwards' aunt takes us. A lot of pressure on the 22-year-old. He was spectacular in game one. He's always played well in the playoffs. His numbers are good. He had 33 points. He did have six turnovers. And early on, you know, they double team him, trap him, blitz him. Uh, he's got to continue to work on his floor game and his passing and his ball handling. But in the third quarter, he was spectacular. He was making his three-pointers. And when he makes his three-pointers, it's kind of game over. There's really not a lot you can do when Anthony Edwards is making his three-pointer. He is spectacular. Kevin Durant was amazing. Devin Booker had a rough game. And that's where uh, tonight, Tuesday, game two, which I'll be at, um, I think Booker is going to redeem himself. So this is, you know, this is how the playoffs unfold. Um, I'm not sure... Um, you know, who's going to be the more desperate team tonight. They, It's a cliche, but the most desperate team usually wins the game. <clears throat> so very much looking forward to the game. Unbelievably proud of the Timberwolves and Chris Finch and the coaching staff for the adjustments they made, and they will have to make more adjustments. Um, I think Cat's going to continue to play well. He had 19. He was solid, only played 27 minutes. Nas played pretty well in game one. Uh, the key to the game was Nikhil Alexander-Walker. He had 18 points off the bench. Uh, one of our issues uh, is our offense is sometimes uh, sometimes not smooth. They say clunky. It was, it was great uh, in game one, but it's the shooting. Phoenix has shooters. I like to say they have four pure shooters in their starting lineup. Grayson Allen. Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, and Kevin Durant. We have one pure shooter. That's Carl uh, Anthony Towns. And I've also said in the big picture, we might need to add a third scorer in the offseason, but we're not there yet. This renewed my faith in how special this team is, and it's why I picked them to win the series. Uh, game one was glorious. The fans were glorious. Um, and just to give you some uh, off-the-court fun uh, I flew in on uh, Friday night, hung out with Charlie uh, Swanson and my brother. We, a lot of the people in Minneapolis are snobs where they won't go over to St. Paul. 
They just won't. <laughs> and uh, my father worked in St. Paul. I grew up down in Hastings, Minnesota, 20 minutes south of St. Paul. Uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald grew up on Summit Avenue in St. Paul. It's a, it's a lovely city with great architecture. The Minneapolis snobs, they don't always go over there to St. Paul. They're separated by the Mississippi River, ever so close. But uh, there are a couple restaurants there that I like. I like uh, Meritage. The locals say Meritage. I like the sound Meritage. It's a French restaurant in the Hams building. And there's the Lexington, a nice supper club. Uh, we also like the, uh, the St. Paul Hotel. We go to the St. Paul Grill or the Lobby Bar. So Friday we went to the Lobby Bar, then we went to the Lexington. Uh, last night on Sunday, we, my brother and I went to Meritage and then sat at the Zinc Bar, the Curb Zinc Bar, trying to pace myself on the drinking. As you know, it was uh, a, quite a party afterwards uh, on game one on Saturday. We went to Mason Margot in Minneapolis where David Fema, the legendary chef who does the Lexus Club at Target Center, he has a restaurant called Fema's and he has this new glorious French restaurant uh, beautiful, called uh, Mason Margot. And uh, Mark Rosen was there with his lovely bride, Karen. Jim Peterson showed up. Even Chad Hartman showed up. Who knew? I was there with Charlie and the wives. And <sighs> I had a martini. And I may have had a second one when Jim Pete showed up. I'm not going to uh, reveal that. But if I did, it was paced out with a lot of water and a lot of food. I was wearing a very nice striped shirt. People kind of grooved on it. It's custom made. I'm uh, talking to you now from the hotel. Uh, maybe it's the Four Seasons. Maybe it's the Westin. I'm not saying maybe it's the Marquette Hotel. I stayed at a lot of different hotels. I can't say which one. Um, very pleased, having a great time in Minnesota. One of the funniest things is um, there's uh, David Fema's son, Elijah, who also works at both restaurants and works his butt off, very nice guy. He met my brother. Uh, we were there for the uh, pre-dinner of the game, pre-game dinner um, at the Lexus Club. And Elijah met my brother, and then he looked at me, and he goes, slightly better which was very funny. And so uh, then it became a running joke. And Charlie would introduce uh, my brother as, here's Craig's better looking brother. And I kept saying, slightly better looking, please. Uh, but it's my way of being humble and self-deprecating and trying to build the self-esteem of my brother. It's not easy living in the shadow of Craig Kilborn. Being the older brother <laughs> of, of Craigers is not, is not easy. Now, my brother... Uh, I like to, you know, boast about him. He was lone valedictorian of his graduating class of 500. The high jump record at Hastings High for 15 years of six foot four. He went to Rice University in Houston. And he uh, he's a software engineer. There are a couple stories I can tell you about my brother. Uh, he was introverted growing up. I was... Uh, I was into comedy and basketball. He also liked basketball. He was into science fiction. He was a big fan of Spock. He liked Star Trek and other, other movies that were uh, The Incredible Shrinking Man, uh, Godzilla, King Kong. So he was heavily into science fiction movies and the television show Star Trek. And I remember I was probably maybe nine years old and it was the summertime, and we have a, a basement, which is, those of you who don't know basements, they're the length and width of the house below ground, so they're a little cooler. So we would have a TV room down there, and uh, while it's hot and humid outside, it's fairly cool down in the basement. And it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday, and a movie called Journey to the Center of the Earth was on. And um, my brother watched it, but I fell asleep on the couch down in the basement. I fell asleep. I woke up. The movie was over. My brother was upset. He said, you dink. You're a dink. That was the term we used back in the 70s for you're a knucklehead. You, uh, you slept through the whole movie. You're anemic. He said I was anemic. So I learned the word anemic when I was nine years old. In subsequent years, I would... Um, 
I was so proud of my brother that when I when people would meet him and I introduce him, I say, I would say uh, he has a large vocabulary. Feel free to stump him, and he was never stumped. Now I did stop it after one point, uh, and I'm going to tell you why. So uh, when I was I was in Venice in the, in the late '80s, uh, Venice Beach, California, and he met uh, a friend, a uh, neighbor named John Turosak. And I said, test him, John. And John said, peripatetic. And my brother said, itinerant. And John goes, I'm out, because I don't even know what itinerant means. But it's, it is nomadic. So my brother would always get, get the word. And then a, a few years later in the 90s, uh, I was uh, hosting The Daily Show in New York, Comedy Central. And my brother came to visit me. And uh, Prior to the show, I would always greet the audience and talk to them. So this wasn't taped. This was just before we we started the uh, the episode. And uh, I said, "Big show tonight. My uh, brother's here, and I'm kind of nervous, and I want to have a good show." And he was lone valedictorian in his graduating class, 500, great vocabulary. Does anyone want to try to stump him? So someone in the audience said, "Crepuscular, crepuscular," and my brother was sitting in the back, and he said, "Of twilight." And the woman said, yes, that is correct. So he got it. And then uh, after the show, we were walking up to my office and I said, great job. And he goes, you know, I had to look that word up, crepuscular, two weeks ago, but uh, he got it. So then I decided not to test him anymore. So he was undefeated in the vocabulary game, big brother, Chris. Um, anyways, we've had a nice time. He works out, he's working out now down in the gym. He, uh, yeah, he, he has a, uh, a discipline to, to stay fit, a little more than I do. I kind of coast, but I was uh, the much better basketball player. Anywho. <sighs> Having a blast in Minnesota. I'm feeling good about the Wolves, but it's a long series. Anything can happen. You know, it was just one game, game one, but what a game it was. I'm glad I was there. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you next week. Uh, my name is Craigers, and remember, young people, I'm proud of you. I love the life gorgeous, it's also so tight.